Hi everybody. I, uh, I recently, well just before the video actually, I, I had to have a head cut uh, to make myself look presentable. <laughs> because uh, at my time of life, if I, if I let it grow, it sort of like grows in certain areas and it doesn't grow in others. And then what does grow, it sort of uh, is a bit on the silver side. So I decided that it wasn't uh, presentable, so uh, hence I present to you my freshly shaven head. Uh, it seems to be the only way to go now. Um, a couple of knives finished and a thank you to Mike from Cornish Knives. I got a feeling he lives um, near Fog 360, uh, Tor Point Way. Uh, so possibly uh, you, you might know uh, Fog 360, Mike or Mike, uh, uh, Fog might know you. Uh, he's, he lives in Tor Point as well I believe. Um, but Mike sent me, he watched a, my recent video where I had some uh, coffee beans given to me, I think from Adrian. And uh, he said he had a, an unused or virtually unused and brand new coffee grinder. So he sent it to me as a gift. So that's really, that's really good. Uh, I'll give that a try later on, Mike. Thank you very, thank you very much for that. Um, and he says that he's watched my videos and uh, I've encouraged him a lot um, so thanks uh, for the feedback and I'm glad that I've, uh, I've encouraged uh, others to give it a try um, uh, a little bit of advice I could pass on perhaps is uh, always be super critical of your own work um, don't listen to the comments uh, always that say oh your work is this that and you ever, you know, your work is excellent because always be critical of your own work uh, and never be um, you know satisfied with uh, with anything if you can if you can see a flaw if you can see a way of improving or then 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 implement that uh, and that's something that I've always strived to do uh, and sometimes especially in the early days and you know the early days and months and well you know years even of, of building knives you know um, you're not going to produce your best. Uh, these it comes with experience, uh, and uh, doing doing these knives over and over, uh, and then you you gradually improve. And you, you may know of a, an imperfection, um, but you, but at the time you don't know how to eradicate it. And as knowledge is gained, uh, and experience is gained, then you finally overcome that that that. Uh, uh, imperfection or that hurdle and move on to the next stage you know it's uh, especially when you're self teaching yourself like I, I i did with knife making you're basically serving a, a, an apprenticeship and when you apprentice to yourself progress is painfully slow at times and it's difficult and it's been really difficult for me and then you know these last sort of i've been making knives uh professionally now for about two, just over almost two and a half years and prior to that as about a year as a hobby and um, and it's that initial interest which pushes you forward and then you're doing your research and you're looking on the internet and you're looking at YouTube videos and there's an awful lot of dross out there and you're searching through the dross to pick out the the, 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 the good sort of nuggets of truth you know and um, my uh, understanding is that knife makers don't give up their secrets very easily uh, and um, basically, uh, you know, you, you've got to t spend time in the workshop uh, in front of that grinder um, and just grind and try different uh, methods of uh, uh, to overcome whatever hurdles it is that you, you face as a knife maker. Um, and there's an old saying that if you keep doing the same old thing over and over again and expect a different outcome... Uh, you know, it's a sign of madness. You know, you, you if, if you've got if you've got a, um, a a problem that you can't resolve, and you're doing the same old thing, expecting a different result, then you're never going to get a different result. You've got to. What I'm trying to say, you've got to try and diversify, uh, and try different approaches to uh, how to overcome certain problems. And believe believe me, Mike, in the uh, journey into a knife into the world of knife making, you are going to meet a mountain of problems. Um, especially if you're going to be very picky about your work and you know you're going to judge yourself very very heavily um 
and, and, it, and it is the only way to improve. And there's never saying that I try to live by that you're only ever as good as your last knife. And, and that sort of saying has really sort of pushed me forward uh, to try and make the next knife or the next batch better than the previous batch. Um, and, you know, after now, uh, sort of been at it for about three and a half years now, four years almost, um, consistency has been reached. Um, and the standards are, 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 are there, you know, but um, you've got to bear in mind that most of us knife makers are self-taught and that if you do serve an apprenticeship under a, a, a master knife maker or whatever apprenticeship you're in, generally it's a six-year apprenticeship, you know, so it's uh, it's not going to be easy. Anyway, uh, keep at it and uh, and you will improve. So that's my advice to you, Mike. Thanks for that coffee grinder. I'll be putting that to use later on. Um, and anyway, uh, two knives finished. Um, I make no apologies for showing these. If people don't want to watch the showing of the knives, I've decided basically they can just turn off uh, and uh, and uh, go elsewhere. But anyway, I, I do this mostly for the benefit of the people that are purchasing the knives. Um, because I think they should see what they're going to be buying. Uh, and also it does show uh, to the wider audience the, um, the standards of the knives because you know when you when your knives reach a, a good level um, you want to show them off don't you because it's uh, something you put a bit of yourself into each knife you know and I don't make many knives two or three knives a week and so a bit of my life has gone into every knife uh, and uh, that means a lot I think anyway here they are The first one is um, a knife that I built from Mike. Uh, he requested desert iron wood. I've had a hell of a job finding desert iron wood. Um, I can waste even an evening easily trying to source a block of desert iron wood, and it's um, it's just nigh on impossible. I managed to get a piece, the last piece that the stockist had. So there's just sheath and leather work, edge dyed black. Uh, ah. I didn't have enough wood for a matching fire steel mic so I had to uh, use some Makassar ebony uh, so there's Makassar ebony it's not as well figured as the Desert iron wood, but it's uh, a similar sort of thing. So there's your, your your fire steel. Uh, logo on there, dangler. There's a knife. So first of all, the uh, hand rubbing. Green liners, straight tang. So that's that knife, uh, Mike. To sort of get a handhold where you can sort of see the whole knife. There you go. It's all there as it should be. So that's Mike's. Uh, and the other knife I've completed was for Seb. Uh, Seb requested an oak, uh, so we've got stabilised oak scales. Oak fire steel. Dangler. And brass. Uh, 
uh, brass D ring. So that's the uh, the knife uh, set. It's uh, stabilised oak scales with black liners. Film four mil and the blade. 27 stroke 28 degree bevel. Mosaic pins, straight tank. So that's the uh, That's your, that's your knife, Mike. Uh, sorry, uh, Zeb. Zeb. So everything as it should be. So that's basically it for this video. My bill's coming out next week for Sean in Cape Town, Philip Dunn, also in uh, South Africa, um, Carl Ryan, uh, and Paul, uh, Paul Deering, uh, yours is up next week as well, so it should be finished either next week or early the week after. Um, so with that, uh, I better get cracking and get some work done, and uh, see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.